Good day grade 11s. Welcome to the next lesson in exponents and thirds. In this lesson we're going to be looking at third laws. Now the third laws are very closely related to exponent laws which makes sense because the third is re just really using a rational exponent so we could translate it like that. But let's have a look at them anyway because it'll help us in our future expressions and examples. So the first one you know already. You know that this is really the relationship between a third and a rational exponent that a to the m over n is equal to the nth root of a to the m. So in other words, I could write this because remember there's an implied 2 here. If there's no number in front of them, this is implied square root. So it'll be 2 to the power of 3 over 2. That one you knew. Okay, let's look at them some more. So this one is very similar to our rash, I mean our exponent one, where it says the nth root of a times by the nth root of b is equal to the same as the nth root of a b. So the important thing here is that the root is the same. The root is the same. So over here you can see that we've got the square root of 2 times the square root of 8. Now the square root of 2 times the square root of 8, neither of these have got perfect squares, but we can take that as to be the square root of 2 times 8, which is the square root of 16, which equals 4. Now, strictly speaking, the square root of 16 is actually 4 or minus 4, but in this case, and for these examples, I'm just going to be looking at the positive value of the square root, just to make it less confusing. The reason I say this is because 4 squared is 16, and minus 4 squared is equal to minus 4 times minus 4. Minus times a minus is a plus, so it becomes plus and 4 times 4 is 16. So therefore the square root of a number is always going to be the positive or negative value of that number. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Okay, the nth root of a over b is equal to the nth root of a over the nth root of b. Now in this case again we've got the square root of 27 over the square root of 3 and again there's no perfect square root of 27 and no perfect square root of 3 but if we use this rule this becomes the square root of 27 over 3 and 27 divided by 3 is 9 so we get the square root of 9 which and in fact I'm just going to carry on with it because since you guys know about it now it's going to be 3 or minus 3. So the square root of 9 is either going to be 3 or minus 3. So you see how you can get something that looks really tricky that we think oh we don't know what the square root of 27 is but if we use our rules we can find out that actually that's the same as square root of 9 which makes a nice pretty number. Okay let's look at another rule. It says the mth root of the nth root is equal to the m times nth root. Okay, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at the square root of the square root of 81. So the reason I can say that is because I could say this is the square root of 81 to the half, right? And then to prove that, that then becomes 81 to the half to the power of a half and what do we do when we multiply, when we come across brackets, we multiply the exponents, it becomes 81 to the quarter, okay, 81 to the quarter, and if you don't already know what this is, we can use our prime factorization, and we can say, okay, fine, what is the smallest prime factor, the prime number that can go into this? Well, 2 doesn't go, but 3 definitely does. 3 goes into 8 twice, remainder 2, 3 goes into 21 7 times, and then 3 definitely goes into 27, 9 times, 3 goes into 9, 3 times, and 3 goes into 3, 1 time. So we therefore we've got 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 equals 81, or we could write it out as 3 to the power of 4, all to the power of a quarter, and then since we know that that is the same as 3 to the 4 over 1, times by 1 over 4, we can cancel those and we end up with the answer of 3. Okay, so that's the rule, the mth root of the nth root, you just multiply your roots. Let's look at your next rule. The next rule says the nth, nth root of a to the power of m is the same as m over n, a to the m over n. So let's have a look at this. Again, remember that this is implied 2, so if we work this out, we'd write that as 2 to the half 
to the power of 3, which would then be 2 to the, remember you multiply these, 3 over 2. And voila, that is exactly the same as that there. So, 3 over 2, 3 over 2. So I've just proven that rule to you. And those basically are your third rules. I would suggest you learn them and practice them. We're going to be doing some more examples in our next lesson. And make sure you can translate between thirds and your exponents easily and know all your laws. Thank you, grade 11s. Have a lovely day.